Today's video is about safety tips for living alone when you're a scaredy cat. If you are new here, I'm Alexis Hope. If you're returning, hey lovely. So this informational video is just not for males or females or really scaredy cats. This is good information for anybody who lives alone or who is about to live alone. Whether you're moving out of you know your parents' home or you're just leaving from a divorce. This is good information. Now some of this stuff may seem of course routine or kind of common sense but these things play a big role in keeping you safe and helping you keep peace of mind because that's what that's all about. Peace of mind especially when you're a scaredy cat. So if you haven't click that like button hit that subscribe button for keeping up with me as far as my living alone adventures and also if you find this information helpful do me a favor and share. Share it with other people. Share it with those of us who are introverts who live alone, share it with anybody who you think would get benefit from this. I also will mention some really great tools that can help keep you safe in your home. I link that below. But if you have any other tips that you want to share with those of us who live alone, we're all ears or eyes rather. Just tell us down below. Also stay tuned because I do say some bonus tips and I do elaborate on some things so that things can make sense and click. This is just stuff you never would have thought about. First things first, have an emergency contact. If anything happens, your neighbors would know who to call, EMS would know who to call, and you, if you're able to, would know who to call. Let's say for instance, you have a break-in, you need to get in touch with family, you have an emergency contact. So. Please always have an emergency contact. Always save their number somewhere on your refrigerator. Write it down just in case your phone isn't working. So have an emergency contact. You always want to save your important numbers. You can write these down, but you don't ever want to rely on just your phone. What happens if you don't have your phone? Your phone is dead. You don't have access to it. Things like that. So you always want to try to write down important phone numbers. You also might want to try to remember these phone numbers. Say for instance, if you have a childhood phone number, Chances are you remember it. That's good when it comes to emergency contact if your family still has that number. My next tip is make friends with your neighbors if possible. I know not everybody is friendly. That's fine, but there's strength in numbers. Making friends with your neighbors can actually benefit you so much more. If something happens, your neighbors care. Your neighbors will come for you. Your neighbors will help you. But if your neighbors don't really talk to you, there's really not much interest. And also speaking of neighbors, when you move, do your research on your neighborhood. I'm talking about pull it up on Google Maps, look at it, look at the reviews for your apartment complex. Are people saying their cars are getting broken into? Does it look like it's in a bad neighborhood? Do your research. I have seen people get up and move to a different state, not ever visiting the actual neighborhood, not doing any research on it, and then they're surprised when it looks rough. And then they don't, they don't feel safe. Do your research on where you're moving to, how it looks, and read the reviews. Because nowadays everything is all about reviews and everything has a review. Look at the reviews and make your decision from there. My next tip is invest in an alarm system. This can be something like Brinks, ADT. But trust me, it is worth it. And trust me, some people are really deterred by seeing those signs outside of people's apartments or houses saying that they're protected by Brinks or ADT. Trust me, it is a deterrent. My next tip is one thing that I like to do when I am going to my car. is I like to take my keys, have my key fob, and make sure I have it with me ready. I don't want to be fumbling in my purse. I don't want to fumble in my pocket. I always make sure I have my key ready. And most of the time before I even get up to it, it is unlocked. So that way all I can do is get in. And once I get in, I lock my car doors. So that is my, that's one thing that I truly do. I always have my keys ready. Whether I'm walking, because my car is right there in front of my apartment. Whether it's close, whether it's far, I always have my key ready. I always unlock my car door before I get to it just so I can get into it faster and I'm not struggling to get into my car and vice versa, trying to get into my house. I always have my key ready as well so I'm not fumbling to get into my house. My next tip is switch up your routine. 
I actually had a job where I walked to. Um, it, it was probably about 10 minutes from my house. I used to walk to this job. This is before I had a car. I actually would walk. I would walk the same way. I had this guy approach me one time. He was like, I see you walking this way every day. You are so beautiful. And I'm like, whoa. You see me walking this way every single day? I had no idea anybody was watching me. And I walked by myself because I had to go to work that morning. I had to be to work by nine. And he's like, yeah, you're so beautiful. I see you walking all the time. What's your name? I was blindsided. That taught me to change up my routine. I started walking different ways. I didn't always walk the same way because I always took the same path. I went the same direction. That taught me change up your direction when you are walking places change up your routine don't do the same thing every day i know a lot of us wake up we go get coffee then we go to work change up your routine another tip i have that plays on this is know your surroundings i really never noticed that anybody was watching me i never noticed that anybody was following me i never noticed any of that and this was because i walked to work with music in my ear straight ahead trying to get to where I was going. I never paid attention to any of that. Never paid attention to the fact that I could have been watched. And mind you, he could have followed me home. I don't know. I will say that I did have an incident where somebody tried to get into my apartment. They tried to take the window out. I don't know. And I wasn't aware of my surroundings. So when you live alone, definitely be mindful when you're walking, when you're out running, when you're out working out, be mindful, change up your routine and be mindful of your surroundings because you just never know who's watching. And trust me, I learned a long time ago, somebody is watching. So I live in an apartment. I have a lot of maintenance people. It's like they can't keep them. <laughs> it's like they cannot just keep maintenance people around here. I don't know what it is. There's always a new one. Be mindful when you live alone, especially if you're a woman. Be mindful of your maintenance people. Know your maintenance people. If you're seeing somebody who's coming to your apartment and say, hey, I need to fix this, and you've never seen them before, pick up your phone and be like, um, excuse me, but is this a maintenance person? I didn't put in any orders. Can you verify that this is one of your people? Before you even let them in. Trust me. There's a lot of scams out there, people getting into other people's houses, pretending to be maintenance, pretending to be even at hotels, pretending to be front desk, housekeeping, things like this. So just keep that in mind. Know your maintenance people if you live in an apartment. And even if you live in a home and you outsource some of your work that you need to get done, know who's coming into your house, know who is doing your repairs. I know we have websites that have pictures and things like that. Just always verify that they are who they say they are. At night, one thing that I like to do is a security check. I like to go through, make sure I've locked my doors, double check to make sure my windows are locked, double check just to make sure everything is secure. And sometimes if I'm in a hurry, because I've done this, I don't do this often, I have come in my house and accidentally not locked my door. And back to maintenance. I have seen maintenance not lock my door once they've left. I always make sure I go behind maintenance. If I know they're coming into my apartment, changing air filters, checking smoke detectors, I make sure they lock my door. And I, at night, I make sure my windows are locked. If I have them open, make sure they're shut and I hear the click. I always do my security check, make sure everything is good. I also check my stove. I got a bad habit of leaving my stove on too. That's another security issue right there. Make sure your stove is off once you finish cooking. I know many of us have spare keys. So, don't store your key in an obvious place. Under the mat. Don't do that. Don't do that. Give your spare key to a person. A person that you trust. Let's say, for instance, a family member. Somebody who you know isn't going to come up in your house. But give your spare key to somebody who you trust. Just don't leave it around in your yard or, you know, on your porch or something. Bad idea. Now, when searching for an apartment, I know we do the best we can, but it may be worth it to live up second floor and above. I know some of us don't want to deal with the stairs, getting up and down, but it may be worth that. It also may be worth paying a little bit more money to live in an apartment where you have to be buzzed in. 
Now, it's much harder to break into somebody's apartment when they live on the fifth floor. You know what I mean? So this may give you some peace of mind. Also, when you are looking for an apartment, if you do get an apartment that you have to be buzzed in, be careful because some of these places will put your name on your little buzzer to get buzzed in. They'll put your full name. Definitely, definitely get that changed. Don't ever let them put your full name. Maybe your initials or maybe your first name and your last initials. Number 13 is get a dog. Simple as that. I've always wanted a German Shepherd. I really think they're cute. I really want me a German Shepherd, but with me working on trying to move, I was like, I'm going to hold off on that. I'm going to wait till I get my new apartment before I get one. I want a German Shepherd. I'm going to get him from a puppy. I'm going to raise him up. I'm going to make sure he is just, he's going to be the cutest thing ever. I already got his name. But get you a dog. Get you a dog. They are protection. They are comforting. I said in my last video about tips for living alone so that you're not lonely, you get a dog. You get some type of pet. Now, mind you, I don't know how helpful a cat would be. Trust me, I I don't think they would care if somebody's breaking in. They're probably going to run. But your dog, your dog got your back. My next tip is to get a camera. I know sometimes people are against this because it does encroach on your neighbors a little bit. But I'd rather for that to happen than for something to happen to me and nobody knows. So that's up to you, but I suggest getting a camera, something like a ring doorbell that you are able to stick outside your door. And if somebody comes up to it or something, you get an alert on your phone and you can handle it from there. You can call the police from there. I'd rather do something like that than, you know, something happened to me and nobody just knows what's going on. So my next tip is they make door and window stops. This will stop the door from opening and stop your windows from opening. Now, the where I live at, you're not able to hopefully open the windows from the outside. You really, especially if it's locked, you really would need to put some force behind it. But that doesn't stop people from trying. Like I told you before, somebody tried to take the window out. They were very much unsuccessful. But they really looked like they took a crowbar and they tried to bend the metal around my window to take it out. I'm pretty sure that was a tiring ass job because they stopped quickly. But door stops and window stops, that would deter so many people. And also, <laughs> that would make you feel a lot better knowing that if somebody did try to open your window, it's not coming out. It's not coming open. Or if somebody tried to open your door, it's not moving. So learning self-defense can also be a good one. I watch a lot of anime. I already think I know how to fight. But you know what? Truth be told, something happens. I'm freezing, okay? So learning self-defense will kind of help alleviate some of that fear and, you know, help you be more confident. So I definitely need to take some karate or something, something official instead of me just in my house doing stuff. It would definitely make you more confident. It will help you feel better. It'll make you feel like you got this. I want you to break in. I, I'm, I'm trying to work on these skills, okay? So definitely learn some self-defense. Is my old friend weapons. I truly have at least a knife somewhere in here. And it's a sad state where you have to have a, a weapon in each one of your rooms, but you just never know. And it can make you feel a little bit better. Like, I have katanas in my bedroom. I probably need, instead of doing karate, I probably need to go get trained on that. But I have some katanas in my room. I also, I th I'm thinking about purchasing some daggers or something, something small, something other than a butcher knife. Um, but there's mace. When I, if you saw my um, Charlotte vlog, I went and bought mace. I bought mace. You can also get a taser. Um, if you, depending on where you live, if you're allowed to, you can have guns. I mean, you can just, a weapon somewhere in case you need to defend yourself. That's completely nothing wrong with it. You know, you hate to get to that point, but you'll feel better knowing that you have something beside your bed at night in case somebody tries to pop off. I just want to reiterate to lock your doors. I live in a unit where there's just two apartments. 
my next door neighbor, her apartment was broken into because she did not lock her door. We live in a very safe area, very safe. She did not lock her door that particular night somebody got in. Now, mind you, I know exactly what happened. She says she locked her door. There is no way. I think she thought she locked her door. She didn't do her nightly sweep. But he literally opened the screen door, walked into her apartment. And she said she was in the bed. She looked up. He was standing over her. Lock your doors. If you do have a screen door and a main door, lock both. I lock both doors. For one, if somebody knocks on my door, I don't want them right here in my face when I open it because they've gotten past the screen door. Uh, I want some, I want a barrier. I want some protection there. I want you to be able to try to come through both doors. If you make it through both doors, you a champ, okay? Because I have locked both doors. I got a door stop. You're not coming up on me any kind of way, okay? So make sure you lock your doors. I know that is something that is probably like, okay, we know that. But I just wanted to share my neighbor's story. She has since moved. She moved to an apartment where you have to be buzzed in. Because I took her over there to that apartment so that she could put in her application and she can do all her paperwork and stuff like that. And I sat in the car and I could not get into the apartment building to sit inside. So that is just how exclusive that was. She was not playing. So I don't blame her. But make sure you guys lock your doors. So another good tip is privacy curtains. You would be surprised how much you can see from the outside when you cut your light on at night or, you know, just things like that. Like I always, uh, before I got my curtains, I always kind of felt like, are people out there watching me get dressed or are they watching me in the bathroom as I shower because my window is right there in the shower. So I just always wondered that, but I have privacy curtains. You're not going to see nothing. I'm not trying to risk it. I'm not trying to take any chances. There are people who peep through windows, especially if you are on the first floor. You need privacy curtains. So bonus time. Now, keep your keys on you. If you live on first floor near your car, keep your keys on you. Because you can press your emergency button and your alarm will go off. This is also helpful back to one of my other tips when I said always have your key ready. If something happens, you can cut your alarm on. Always have your keys ready. And like I said, where I live, I can sit right here in this room and press my car alarm and it'll go off. You'll hear it. I always have my keys with me, my katanas and my keys. And also, you never know when I got to go out the other door. You just never know. It's just all about preparation. So keep your keys with you. You just never know. Another bonus tip is never open the door when somebody knocks. Always ask, who is it? Or yes, something like that. Don't ever just open your door. And I have a screen door and I got a main door. I keep them both locked. You're just going to have to talk to me through the door. Because and first of all, if you didn't call, I'm probably not going to answer anyways because I need notice. But if you do come by, I'm going to ask you who you are. I'm going to look through the hole, the peephole. I'm going to ask you who you are. So you're just never going to get into my apartment. My last tip for us scaredy cats. Please stop watching scary stuff before you go to bed. I'm talking about I have sat and watched true, true crime stories and I'm talking about every little bump and my apartment makes crazy noise. OK, it makes noise. I'm thinking somebody's breaking in with every single noise. Stop watching true crime. Stop watching scary movies. I had to stop watching Criminal Minds, okay, before I went to bed. All right? So, like, you guys, you just have to do that during the day. Watch it during the day, then watch some SpongeBob later. That's what I do. So, you guys, those are my tips. I hope those were helpful. If you have any more, I am always all ears or eyes. So, I hope you guys like this video. If you have more, put them in the comments below. I'm eager and interested to hear what you all do, what you all do to protect yourselves. And I will see you in my next vlog, which will be a vlog because I'm going to get back on that because I am Alexis Hope Vlogs after all. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.